Don't know, fasting is when people restrict their eating and or drinking to only a few hours during the day. And with Ramadan 2024 finally here by the time this comes out, there are gonna be many athletes across all types of sports that will be fasting whilst they're still playing. If you don't know, I live in Dubai, which is a city in the UAE, which is an Islamic country. So that means that Ramadan over here is observed nationally with reduced school and working hours. However, I'm also a Christian who grew up fasting during Lent. This year, the two are expected to overlap. So Lent started on the 14th of February and is expected to end around the 28th of March, depending on what calendar you use. And Ramadan is expected to start around the 11th of March and expected to finish around the 7th of April. Now these are all approximate dates because religiously, they have to look at moon sightings for all that and also at the time of filming this Ramadan has not yet started but Lent has started and I've been fasting for about three weeks at the time of filming. Currently fasting right now. I usually try to stay away from nutrition advice unless it's quite general because it is not my specialism but seeing as I'm personally fasting and athletes that I work with out here are also fasting I thought it would be interesting to delve into the research and see what it says about the impact of fasting as an athlete on performance. But before we get into that my name is Tolu and welcome to the gang. Over this side of YouTube, I try to share as much realistic and practical advice that helps you become a well-rounded athlete that can perform at a high level in game and beyond, AKA an elite smart athlete. Okay, so disclaimer, when us you know, researchers, us sports scientists or trainers, whatever, say that we're looking at papers, it's hard to really say whether one paper is a definitive source or has a definitive conclusion over another because I guess research continues to develop and evolve over time but usually I've cross-referenced it with a meta-analysis or a systematic review and that is what I'm looking at today. There is a systematic review done by the American College of Sports Medicine back in 2019. And this review has looked at around 30, 40 different papers. The first thing in this review it says that most of the studies were actually looking at athletes that were observing Ramadan and I think the reason for that is because it's probably the one time you will know that there is a large group of people all fasting at the same time so the conditions of their fasting are pretty much the same then just provides a bit more consistency in the results for people that are observing Ramadan. However fasting is not a hard and fast rule and fasting can be manipulated and if we think about like intermittent fasting that can be customized in so many different ways. So this review also looked at different variables variations of intermittent fasting too. The first thing to know is just a basic overview of our energy systems if you don't know. So we have our carbohydrate system, our glucose system. That energy comes from food and is released very quickly into the muscles to be able to produce force and do activity. And then once those stores run out, we also have our lipid fat energy stores which are used for probably more longer endurance type exercises and is released more slowly into the bloodstream to then provide energy to the muscles. When we fast, we are reducing the the amount of glucose available in our body, the amount of carbohydrates there to be able to be released quickly into our body. But our body will then start to rely on our fat stores more for energy. When we run out of both of these stores, then our body will start to use other parts like our protein. So our muscles will start to be used as an energy source and then that means we'll lose muscle mass if you are in a severe energy depletion. But that is usually only the case if you're like starving for multiple, multiple days and with fasting there is always a period where you will refuel essentially so you'll get those carbohydrate stores back. Being able to go longer without those quick releasing energy how does that affect us in sports? What does the research actually say about the impact of fasting on high intensity exercise? All the papers that I analyzed that did do research into high intensity exercise whether it was for a different type of intermittent fasting protocol or during Ramadan they all observed at least a slight drop in performance when it came to high intensity exercises, especially when being repeated. But there was also a reduction in power or peak power performance too, which is obviously directly related to high intensity exercises because you need to be able to perform at max intensity, produce max power. However, one interesting finding which was done on cyclists found that after 10 days of fasting, the reduction in performance was reduced, if that makes sense. For the first 10 days of the fasting for these cyclists, there was a significant drop in their ability to perform the high intensity sprints. However, after 10 days, it kind of went back up a little bit. They were able to perform a bit better, not as good as when they were eating normally, but still slightly better than those first 10 days of fasting, which suggests that our bodies can adapt to fasting to a certain extent to be able to use other sources of energy to 
produce that power for high intensity exercises. However, there's still not enough energy being released quick enough to be able to perform them at the highest level that you need. Also some studies that just kind of looked at skipping particular meals. So there was one where they skipped breakfast. There was one where they skipped all their other meals but ate breakfast. But in both, the results were similar, which was that in the periods where they ate, so whether they ate breakfast or they only ate dinner, or they only ate lunch and dinner, their performance was much better in those periods where they ate than in the periods where they were fasting or the periods where they had skipped their meals. For high intensity exercises, we need those carbohydrate stores. That is the quickest way to get energy. We do have muscle glycogen stored in our body. So it doesn't mean that if you haven't eaten, there's nothing available, but that muscle glycogen is not stored in great quantities. So when you don't eat for long periods and you have to do multiple bouts of exercise, high intensity exercise in that time period, then it becomes more difficult because that energy needed for it isn't available. So overall, what these studies show is that it's difficult to perform high intensity exercises at max efficiency and max power whilst you're fasting. Please be forgiving if your favorite athlete who is fasting during Ramadan or at any point during the year isn't able to run as fast as they normally would or do any sprints. And I'm thinking particularly of Liverpool fans who are trying to win the league with Mo Salah obviously fasting. If you're enjoying the video so far, then you might as well like and subscribe because like this is free information, it's free game. Now let's look at the low intensity or endurance type of exercises. So one of the studies looked at in this review looked at Algerian football players during Ramadan and it found that endurance was negatively affected where there was a 16% decrease in endurance capacity. But there was another study where there was actually no drop off in endurance capabilities at all. And another one done on Ramadan footballers showed that there was a very minimal drop off in a 30 minute timed run. All of these results kind of vary slightly, but the one thing that is consistent with them is that there was no increase in performance during the fast. So similar to the high intensity exercises, whilst you're fasting, you tend to just have less energy available. Even though it's the slow release energy from the fat stores, there is usually less of that available because you're just consuming less calories most likely. Although I say that, one of the papers in the study did show that when athletes skip breakfast, they tend to consume more calories at lunch. But those calories at lunch probably wouldn't be enough to make up for the calories they missed at breakfast. However, when looking at a longer duration fast, like during Ramadan, there was also a test done on mice where they showed that the mice actually performed the same after they adjusted to the fasting protocol. However, as you can see with the footballers, this might not quite translate to humans. If you wanna see more behind the scenes of how I train myself and other athletes, then head over to TikTok and Instagram, follow me at Elite Smart Athletes because I'm always posting behind the scenes stuff of my workouts on there. Now let's look a bit at lifting. What is the effect of fasting on resistance training and thus your body composition? And when it comes to body composition and resistance training, you know, fitness and sports, it is intertwined. And you'll see there's the general rules like, oh, eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I'm not gonna go into all of that, but that's just to signify the importance of the fuel that is in your body to be able to affect how your body looks is so key. You know, they say you can't out train a bad diet and you know, for you to see abs, for example, it, it starts in the kitchen. If you're fasting and you're not eating, then you might think that, well, you're not eating, you're not putting anything bad into your body. And since your body has to use this fat energy system for the slow release, Maybe you're gonna lose some fat. Now, in the studies that they looked at in here, there's one study that they did with people that were untrained in resistance training. So untrained, they just probably had less than a year's experience in terms of lifting. They found that there was absolutely no effect of fasting on their body composition or their ability to lift weights at all. So their strength wasn't affected. They were lifting the same level of weights, but they weren't any more lean or they didn't gain any more muscle mass. When they looked at athletes that were trained, trained probably means over a year of experience of lifting, there was a slight difference. So with trained athletes, their maximal strength was maintained. Their muscle mass and cross-sectional area of certain areas like their arms and their thighs was also maintained, but they lost fat. In the trained athlete study, they obviously had a group that were fasting and a group that were not fasting. Both groups were eating the same amount of calories. It was just the timing that was different. Some of the studies looked at bodybuilders and power athletes, so the ones who are at the elite level of body recomposition and maximal power output they also found that there was basically no difference in their performance. So long as they maintained a good routine of eating the correct amount of calories, 
and sleeping. Overall, this suggests that the amount of calories you consume is really what's gonna affect your body recomposition when you look at those power athletes and those untrained athletes and the bodybuilders. But it is curious to see what happened with those trained athletes that were fasting. It seems like their bodies actually made adaptations to the energy sources it was using during workouts because they were still eating the normal calories. It was just the timing that was different. They were able to actually lose fat because I guess their training experience is what allowed their body to make adaptations to the energy sources used for workouts. So to summarize, for high intensity exercise, fasting will hinder your performance by quite a bit. For endurance exercises or low intensity, it will hinder it, but ever so slightly. And for body recomposition and resistance training, fasting doesn't necessarily affect it that much. But in all cases, Fasting isn't necessarily going to improve it because at the end of the day, you are lacking energy. However, if you're fasting for religious reasons, then you know you might say that that lack of physical food is just being replaced by a spiritual food and that's gonna be able to sustain you going on. And therefore your performance will not be hindered, it will actually be divinely boosted. If you don't believe in God, then you're probably not gonna be on that vibe. Either way, you can still perform as an athlete whilst you're fasting. You just might need to alter certain things and you definitely, definitely need to make sure that when you do eat, you are one, making sure you can consume enough calories and two make sure that you are getting a variety of nutrients and also if your fast like during Ramadan is limited by sunlight hours particularly so your sleep schedule is affected then you want to make sure you are not messing up your sleep so naps are going to be your best friend particularly during the sunlight hours because it helps the time pass whilst they're hungry so be smart about it like use it to your advantage because that way as an athlete you're still getting that recovery from your training but you're also not hindering your performance due to a lack of sleep as well. If you are interested in actually reading this review, it's only like three pages long, then check the description and I'll put a link to it below. Whilst you're in the description, head to elitesmartathletes.com and you can book a call with me if you're interested in seeing how we could train together. You can also get a free vertical jump workout there by just entering your email. And there's also a whole load of product discounts in the description too, such as saving 15% on the Mobilizer joint supplement by Avea Life. I've personally been using it for almost a year now. You will have seen it on my channel for a while. You'll also see it on my website. So I would definitely recommend it if you have any sort of joint pain. If you like this breakdown, then check out the video that's about to come up on screen, which is a review of the Nutrition Code by PGF Performance. It's an app that I use to track my calories back in 2020. So nowadays in 2024, I'm very knowledgeable on exactly what meals I need to eat, how much of it I need, especially whilst I'm currently fasting now. So I'm able to vary up my nutrition and get that right so that my performance isn't affected. For example, today I was able to do a high intensity workout in the morning and also some low intensity cardio. And before I break my fast, I'm gonna go and hit a basketball workout too. So check out that video and you might as well subscribe whilst you're at it. But as always, until next time, stay blessed.